Hi, HCC. Uh, welcome to church. Hope you enjoy. Uh, we're so happy to be with you this morning. I hear the service today is great. Good morning, RHCC, and happy Thanksgiving. It's hard to believe it's already Thanksgiving, and we're truly blessed, blessed and grateful that we are given this day. This morning, we are asking that you join in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings that we're given. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we come this morning and we read from the Psalms. In Psalms 104, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations. So this morning, wherever you are, if you're on your couch or if you're in your bed or if you're here with us, we're going to respond together. His love endures forever. If you're saying English, that's what you're going to say. And if you're speaking Farsi, you're going to say... So here we go. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. To Him who alone does God great wonders, who by understanding made the heavens to him who spread out the earth above the waters. Give thanks to him who made the great lights, the sun to rule over the day, the moon and the stars to rule over the night. His love endures forever. He rescues us from our foes. He gives food to all flesh. And today we give thanks to the God of heaven for His love endures forever. Let's sing together. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love
سلام به همه شما عزیزان خداوند خدا رو شکر به خاطر امروز و فرصتی که مهیا شده تا بتونیم با هم باشیم و خدا رو بپرستیم آیاتی رو از کلام خدا میخونم در افسوسیان باب 5 آیات 19 به بعد و با یکدیگر به مزامیر و تسبیحات و سرودهای روحانی گفتگو کنید و در دلهای خود به خداوند بسرایید و ترنم نمایید و پیوسته به جهت هر چیز خدا و پدر را به نام خداوند ما عیسی مسیح شوک کنید و در فیلیپیان باب چهار آیات چهار تا هفت میگه که در خداوند دائما شاد باشید و باز میگویم شاد باشید اعتدال شما بر جمعی مردم معروف بشود خداوند نزدیک است برای هیچ چیز اندیشه مکنید بلکه در هر چیز با سلات و دعا با شوک گذاری مسئولات خود را به خدا عرض کنید و سلامتی خدا که فوق از تمامی عقل است دلها و زنهای شما را در مسیح عیسی نگاه خواهد داشت خدا را شکر میکنیم به خاطر کلامش چون در این آیات ما رو تشویق میکنه به پرستش اون به شوق گذاری اون و اگر ما بخوایم به اطراف خودمون به زندگی خودمون به همه چیزهایی که در دست و زندگی ما وجود داره نگاه کنیم دلایل زیادی برای شوق گذاری خداوند وجود داره خدا ما رو دعوت نمیکنه تا با یه روح خسته با یه روح دائما شکایت و گله گذار به حضورش بریم بلکه ما رو دعوت میکنه تا شوک گذار باشیم در تمام راه هامون میگه در هر چیز او را شوک کنید در هر فکری در هر چیزی که وجود داره او رو شوک کنیم چون اون ما رو از موت به حیات منتقل کرده و امروز خدایی رو در زندگی خودمون داریم که از صبح وقتی چشمامون رو باز میکنیم وقتی به طلوع خورشید نگاه میکنیم وقتی به بارش آسمان نگاه میکنیم میتونیم اون رو پیوسته شوک کنیم که او همچنان در محبت و اقتدار خودش ایستاده فرزندان خودش رو تا به انتها محبت میکنه و به هیچ وجه در آنی در ثانیه‌ای فراموش نمیکنه او شایسته شوک‌گذاریه زیرا کلام خدا در مزامیر بارها و بارها تاکید میکنه و ما این آیات رو میبینیم افرادی که به هر طریقی دنبال یک فرصت بودن تا خدا رو شوک کنن با آیات با کلمات با سرودها با سازهای خوش صدا و این چیزیه که خدا به ما بخشیده یک رابطه عاطفی در شوک گذاری اون رابطه عاطفی اون رو به خدا اعلام میکنیم اون عشقمون رو به خدا اعلام میکنیم نه با گله و شکایت نه با قصه و رنج بلکه با خوشی با شوک گذاری و حتی مسئولات خودمون رو نیازهامون رو حتی در همون شوک گذاری ها به حضور خدا میبریم خدا به همتون برکت بده و میخوام واقعا روح شوک گذار روح پرستشگر تو زندگی همه ما در هر شرایطی وجود داشته باشه چون اون قادر مطلق و محبت نابه خدا به همه شما برکت بده آمین and good morning kids clusters happy thanksgiving i just want to start off this morning by giving a shout out to thank all of you for joining us this week shout out to kyle and raya i see you kostra jane michael elijah jordan eyes on you jordan eyes on you <laughs> shout out to all of the parents and guardians as well this week who have worked hard to prep a thanksgiving meal and a shout out for all of those who have been working hard throughout this whole pandemic on the front lines. A special last shout out to our a for j team who's filming these services. a for j subscribe, woo! 
On this Thanksgiving Day, you all probably have some shout-outs in mind, too. Shout-outs for things that you're thankful for. One of the Bibles in the writer named James, Jesus' brother, tells us that all good things come from above. All good things come from God. And in 1 Chronicles 16, 8, David tells us to remember to shout out all of the good praises to God. All of the praises to our good, 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 good Father. So, let's give a shout out to God this morning. On the count of three, I want you to shout out something that you're thankful to God for. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, okay, a bit of a lame attempt. That wasn't everyone. Zayden, eyes off the video games, back on me, okay? We're gonna give this one more try. On the count of three, shout out something that you're thankful to God for. Remember, the God who is the giver of all good things. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, Caitlin, you're thankful for Tess's school right now? Holly, thankful for your great big sister, Hannah? And Dominic, you're thankful for me? Oh, thanks guys, I'm thankful for you too. You know, it is great to shout out our thankful praises to God. In fact, we were made to do it. It says that we were made to praise God for all of his goodness. And you know what? It feels pretty good to praise God too. When we show our thankfulness, we have joy and peace in all circumstances. All circumstances? All circumstances? Yes, all circumstances. And you know how we know this? Because one of the main writers of the New Testament named Paul tells us this. And do you remember Paul? Paul, who was shipwrecked more than once. Paul, who was put in jail. Paul, who was beaten up and close to death. That Paul tells us that in all circumstances, when we give our thanks and praise to God, we can have joy and peace. We have joy because we remember all that God has done for us and is doing for us. And we have peace because we remember that God is a faithful God who will continue to provide in the future. Wow, we serve a great, great, great God. Finally, it changes our attitude towards others. Instead of looking around and seeing what bugs us about other people, we can look and see what we're thankful to God for about other people. Isn't that amazing? That thanking God changes our attitude to showing gratitude. Our attitude turns into showing gratitude to God and others. It has big impact on our relationship with those around us. So is this easy to do? Is it easy? Sometimes it's easy. Today, Thanksgiving is easy, but Thanksgiving isn't just supposed to be on a holiday. Thanksgiving is supposed to transform into thanks living. It's supposed to be so that we thank God every day. Now, this is really difficult to do every single day. And sometimes when things are difficult to do, we need to use tools in order to remind us to make them into a habit so that we can have Thanksgiving transformed into thanks living. So today on Turkey Day in some households, we are going to use our turkeys today to remind us to give thanks every day. So every day when you wake up, everybody that is in Kids Quest should have received one of this. If you didn't and you want one, you can comment down below. But every day we're gonna make these turkeys and then fan the flame of our Thanksgiving. We are going to start with being thankful for family, anyone in your family or something about them that you love. Then we're going to fan even further Thanksgiving and friends. Who's been a good friend recently? Let's shout out that friend and tell them how great of a friend they've been. And thank God for that friend. I'm gonna be thankful for school. Yes, even tests. Thankful for an opportunity to learn and be educated and have a community of, pe community of people you love. We're going to be thankful for food. I know I'm about to be thankful for a lot of food, definitely. And we are going to be thankful for our bodies and our minds. 
that God has created us, created us with specific looks and quirks, but also created us with great bodies that are going to do what God has planned for them to do. That's amazing. And last but not least, we're going to be thankful for church. Thankful that even in this time when we can't get together in person, we're thankful that we're a community of friends and family in the church who love each other, who support each other and encourage one another. So think of someone in the church or something about church that you want to just praise God for and be thankful to. So every day, I want you to fan the flame of thankfulness. Make it a habit to praise our good, good, good God. And know that with that comes joy and peace of knowing a God who provides and who will continue to provide. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and give a big shout out to our amazing God today. All of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i have in you is more than
Thanksgiving. Today we're going to talk about the art of gratitude. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us. I thank you for the joys. I thank you for our troublesome times. I thank you because in all that we do, you are good to us. So Father, we just ask that you will use me this morning, that you will bless us, and that my words will be your words. In your name we pray. Amen. James 1, 13 to 17 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. One of the most important parts of an award ceremony is the acceptance speech. This speech gives someone the chance to thank those who are dear to them. It could be the director, maybe the staff, a spouse, and of course, <laughs> that sometimes cliche thank you to God. No matter what venue, thankfulness for who we know, where we have been, and what we have is important. Lynn Manuel Miranda's Tony Awards acceptance speech is a great example of gratitude and recognition that he could not have accomplished what he did alone. We're going to watch the video now. Uh, this envelope says Lynn, but it's not entirely Lynn's, because when you work with Tommy Kale, the best idea wins. When Alex finds a place to cut or Andy needs more bars, you can't think this is mine, you can only think this is ours. Is it ours or is it ours? Well, it's hours of rewriting. You talk burr with Oscar and Jeffrey and keep igniting that spark into a flame. Make a mark, arrange the frame, hit your target and change the game. Earn the hyphen in your name. You let David Diggs turn your couplet into a triplet. You give him the mic, he grips it and spits it, rips it and flips it. You turn back to this envelope that says you win. You think about your father and how scared he must have been when he came to New York City and he didn't speak the language. So you give Hamilton all his hunger, genius and anguish. And you vanquish self-doubt by perfecting your lines of text. And then you call Tommy Kale and you say, what's next? Thank you so much. The words attitude of gratitude can remind us of a cliche piece of wall art that is meant to motivate us. While cliches can be annoying, this one is still true. When we are able to see our lives through God's will and our relationship with him, we can have a thankful attitude, even when it seems like we have no reason to at the moment. It comes not from some positive confession or visualization, but from a faith and peace in knowing God. Gratitude is a powerful force for people. With gratitude, people acknowledge the goodness in their lives, in the process, people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies at least partially outside themselves. As a result, gratitude also helps people connect to something larger than themselves as individuals. Gratitude helps people feel more positive, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. Whom should we thank in our lives? Maybe our parents, our spouse, good friends. Should we thank God for anything? And if so, what is giving thanks to God? Well, yes, the truth is that our, on our thank you list should be God. God should be at the center because anything good in our lives is from the hand of God. As Christians, there are some obvious things we can be thankful for. 
We are thankful for Jesus' atoning death on the cross that brought us salvation. We are thankful that we have a relationship with God. We are thankful that one day we will all be together in heaven. But what about what God is doing right now? What are we thankful for? Reminder, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In context, James is speaking to a strange theology that God would bring about temptation to the believer. James states that someone should not say, I am being tempted by God. Temptation and evil do not come from God. Rather, all good things in this world come from a good God. This larger theological truth implications extend to our whole lives. Donald Burdick writes, God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. God's gifts are marked by kindness, helpfulness, and not destructiveness. The point of James' statement is that nothing but good comes from God. We need to remember that James is looking back on his very Jewish upbringing and thinking back on his life with his parents and his half-brother who happened to be Jesus. He came to faith after Jesus rose from the dead, and yet he had a lifetime of growing up with Jesus. I can imagine that perhaps he and his brothers talked about being enticed, tempted, or even dragged into sin at some point because James saw Jesus resist temptation growing up. James is relaying to us solid, practical, living advice as we seek to be more like Jesus. It is very important that we understand that sin is our fault. Your parents didn't make you do it. Your spouse didn't make you do it. Your boss didn't make you do it. A bad dip in the gene pool didn't make you do it. Even Satan didn't make you do it. And most especially, God didn't make you do it. The fault for every single sin you and I will ever commit lies in us. We're the guilty ones. Each one of us is guilty when our own desires tear us away from God and lead us into sin. We do it. We lust. We covet. We steal. We cheat. We even have bad attitudes. Sometimes we say things. And most of the time, we like to blame someone outside of ourselves. But James clues us in that the reality of sin is that sin begins as a seed of desire inside ourselves and grows into temptation and then into sin. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can, be, what you can bear. But when you are tempted... He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. There are four times when Satan really comes after us. And it's when we already are weak. Even when we're hungry, we're angry, we're lonely, we're tired. So here are a few things that can help us. One, stay in the word. Read your Bible. Memorize the verses. Two, pray. When Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, he had been fasting and praying for 40 days. He said no to every temptation. Avoid compromising situations. Try not to put yourself in the path of temptation. Number four, make yourself accountable to someone. Are you looking at things you shouldn't see? Are you hanging out in places where you shouldn't be? Let's go back to James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. James reminds us that everything good comes from God. And although we may fail, 
God will never fail us for that we have many things to be grateful for. For that we will be grateful to God who gives all good things in our lives to us. Being thankful is an important aspect of being a human. I find it funny, and I'm guilty of this, but why with all the things that we have been given, do we need to have gratitude journals or gratitude challenges? And I say I'm guilty because I actually have a gratitude journal. I write in it daily. I've also been part of gratitude challenges where I have to share three things I'm grateful for every day. They've been beneficial to me. And I think the reason I find this funny and odd is because we have so many positive and good things in our lives that we need to be reminded that they come from God. And we should be rejoicing that God has provided us with these gifts, these provisions, these talents, and even friendships. The Old Testament understands the importance of memory, thankfulness, and in relationships. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses emphasizes remembering and not forgetting what God has done for you. In Deuteronomy 4.9, he says, Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Moses continues his exhortation by saying, remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. The Hebrew people, like us, had a tendency to forget what God was doing for them. The center of their remembrance was to be thankful, which would bring praise, which would strengthen their relationship. When we omit thankfulness, we are more likely to wander from our walk with God because we forget what he has done for us. In the Disney movie, Alexander the Terrible, horrible with, and the horrible, no good, very bad day, we meet a young boy for whom usually everything in life goes wrong. But then he experiences a day when everything goes right. However, this is not the case for the rest of his family, Alexander gives his, in, his dad an encouraging speech, trying to help them see some perspective in life. Dad, you don't always have to steer your ship with positivity. Some days are just bad, and nothing can fix it. Trust me, I would know, says this young boy. We need to give thanks, though, in all circumstances. And this can be easy to say but challenging to live, can't it? Sometimes life really stinks. <laughs> it's hard to be thankful when times are difficult. When someone's lost a job, a child is ill, there's a death in the family, there's political and social unrest and injustice, there's a worldwide pandemic. The list could go on and on with what is wrong in our world and in our lives. However, our relationship with God can always help us find gratitude. Gratitude can become a spiritual discipline for us. So if you're like me, keep writing in that journal. Keep bringing those things that you are grateful for to the center of life. Instead of just being thankful on holidays or during certain ceremonies, we can improve our spiritual walk with God as we begin to constantly be thankful for what God has said, has done in our lives, our families, our children, and even those we live next to. For example, the moment our child is born, it is obvious that we are going to be thankful. But what about that moment sitting in traffic? Perhaps we can be thankful in that situation by seeing it as a time to slow down or a chance to pray or maybe listen. What is God telling you about your life right now? No moment or circumstance is too small to acknowledge the good God is doing in that moment 
in our world. It is amazing as I begin to hear people talking about having to slow down because of the pandemic we're living in. People expressing their thanks to God for giving them a little more time with their family, allowing them time to have the space they needed, the time to heal from the busyness of life. I had a young father who recently had a a new baby say, I get to spend a whole year with my new child that I would have never had. That's pretty incredible. As we celebrate Thanksgiving this weekend, let us be reminded to remember who God is and what he has done. Let us be filled with gratitude. Let us fully trust and obey God, even in the most difficult times. Sometimes that requires remembering the God we have a relationship with. When there is sickness, financial struggles, tragedy that comes with living in a fallen world, let us remember what God has done in our lives previously. Testimonies are a powerful way to remember and reflect on what God has done in our lives and the lives of others in our community. This upcoming week, I encourage you to take specific action steps to record God's work in your life so that you will never forget. I challenge you this morning to record yourselves sharing your story of what God is doing in your life as a way of reminding yourself of who you belong to, who you serve, and who you are grateful to. Please feel free to send me those videos. I don't need to post them, unless you want me to. But I want to see where God is leading you. I want to see the gratitude that we as members of Christ's body have for all that he has done for us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every member of RHCC. I thank you for their lives, their servant hearts, I thank you for all that they are doing in their neighborhoods, in their employments. Father, we just thank you for the gifts that you have given them. And we ask that they will be using them to further your kingdom. Father, I thank you for those who have joined us online today. We don't know where they're from. We don't know who they may be, but there may be someone new watching. And so, Father, we ask that you will add a special blessing on their life and that they too will see where God has brought them. Father, we thank you for the blessings, even when they don't feel like blessings. We thank you for the love of family and friends, and we thank you for all that you have given us. Father, we thank you for the reminder that every good gift, every perfect gift, is from above. Father, be with us as we go into another week. Thank you for all you have done and continue to do. In your name we pray, amen. Hey church, we're gonna sing All My Fountains and hopefully you'll join in wherever you are with a little clapping of your hands. And remember later in the song you have that special part that goes like this. Sing all my fountains. This dry and desert, desert land, I tell myself, keep walking uh, on. Here's something up ahead, water falling like a song. An everlasting stream, your river carries me home. Let it flow. I've rambled on my own, 
would find An everlasting stream 